war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I asked from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in his pavilion, in his sacred tent. <laughs> and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. So we're going to do this now led by a team that is both Jewish and Arab together from the land. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeshua, we want to we wanna fix our eyes on you this morning. We want to take our eyes off of our screens, off of the news, off of everything that's pulling for our attention, Lord. We just want to say, Yeshua, we look to you. We look to you, Yeshua. You are the deliverer. You are the deliverer who comes in Zion. You are the deliverer. So let's just focus our eyes in on Yeshua right now as we begin this worship time. And let's let everything else just fall to the wayside. Let's lay everything down, every burden, every atrocity that's affecting our hearts and our minds and our spirits. I just, Lord, we just lay these things at your feet and we look at you, Yeshua.
will not return until his people say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So we just want to sing that right now. Baruch haba b'shem
what you've done for me. Woo! Hallelujah. We will sing of your goodness. We will sing of your mercy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave.
really feel that we need to sing this song again. And we can stand, we can be on our knees. Let's put our phones down, turn it off, put everything aside, and let's worship this song again and focus our eyes on Him, that He's in charge, He's in control. Nothing happens that He's not aware of, that we just sit, stand here or, or lay down on our knees, whatever, and just worship Him. He is the King of glory. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. No matter what happens around us, the storm around us, Yeshua is with us in the, in the, in the boat. And the peace of God is here. And the presence of God is here. And we welcome your presence. And we worship you. We worship you. We honor you, Yeshua. We honor you. Let's do it again. Yeah. 
Haleluya. Before I continue, we have in the front two couples that I'm going to ask you to go through them, and they will, they are a discernment team, they will discern and let the leadership know, and if we feel it's appropriate, we'll bring it to the front. So I'm going to ask uh, Norma and Martin, raise your hand, Norma and Martin, okay. And Kerry, Dr. Kerry and Sandy, they're here in the front. And feel free, if you have a word of prophecy or scripture, feel free to bring it to them. They'll discern it and uh, bring it to the leadership. Amen. We have a blessing in Hebrew, we say, Baruch Shigyanu Lazman Azeh, which means, blessed the Lord that we have come to such a time as this. <laughs> Now you may ask, what are you talking about? Well, you must understand, with all this going on, many uh, people, doesn't matter who, what, have said, Avi, cancel the conference. There's war, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Yes, I'm crazy for Yeshua. Yes. I am. Yes. And um, this morning I, uh, Prayed, I said, Lord, I need, I, need, I need a word from you because I, I don't know. Did I miss you? I just This is personal between me and God. And the Lord led me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. I'll just read it to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And this is what he said. The word says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident. And I said, Thank you, Lord. So, we may see with our physical eyes things going on, and we say, in Hebrew we say, Ezu Balagan, what a mess. Oh, Lord, what a world, what a mess. But we need to keep our eyes on Yeshua and walk by faith. And I was so encouraged this morning, just the Lord gave me that verse. Um, because there is, there is a war going on in our land. For those who may not know, <laughs> you haven't watched the news, good for you. There is war going on in Israel right now. Why are we doing a conference? Well, let me first correct. This is not a conference that we have a normal list of speakers and everybody knows exactly what they do and program and everything. This is not a conference. This is a gathering of the one you man to pray and intercede and worship the King of Glory. I'll say it again. A gathering of the one you man to pray and intercede and worship the King of Glory, Yeshua. Welcome the King of Glory is a prophetic prayer movement. It's not an organization, it's not an institution, it's organic, it's a living movement of prayer. Now, just you say, oh, yeah, it's easy for you to say, no, it's not, because my dear wife, Haya, on the 28th of September, two weeks ago, she went to surgery in her spine, and it got complicated. And the doctors tore the nerves, uh, how's it called, Dua, Dua? Dua, yes. I don't know nothing about medical, but this I learned. And for 10 days, she has been laying flat on the bed. She was not allowed to move. And I just took care of her. I canceled all my meetings, all my engagements. And I said, my priority is my wife. I'm there to serve her, to feed her to help her. She's my wife. Next year, yeah. next year, I'm going to be 40 years married. 
So basically, she has, I've been in the hospital with her 24-7 for the last two weeks. So first of all, I want to apologize for all who are watching. I'm really sorry if I was not available for your questions and for meetings. I want to apologize because I was not available. My priority is my wife and my family. But I'm here. Do you know why I'm here? Because a miracle happened and God healed her back. And yesterday I was able to take her to a rehabilitation center in Tel Aviv. And she's been taken care of. She's very happy. And she's slowly walking with a walker. And she is able to function. And I did it yesterday evening and drove last night to Jerusalem to be here. This is a miracle. Because I told the leadership here, there's a good chance that I will not be here. So you have to take care of things. <laughs> and we have a wonderful leadership team here. Yes. I want you to know I'm not here by myself. I can't, we always meet together, we counsel, we pray together. And whenever a decision is made, it's a 100% yes. We're in total unity and agreement as a leadership team. And I really want to honor all the leaders that are in this leadership team, the Israeli leadership team. So we live in a prophetic time. Do you believe that? Yes. If you don't believe it, you came to the wrong place. <laughs> we live in a very prophetic time. And I believe one of the words, you know, this came from my doctor, who the surgeon who did Haya's operation. I asked him, what about that? What about in three days? What about this? You know what he told me? Avi Savlanut, patience, one day at a time. And I said, yes, sir. Because we were trying to make plans. And he said, no, you can't. With surgery, just one day at a time. And this is what I've been living for the last two weeks, one day at a time. Trusting the Lord. Because God is able, he's wonderful, he's a good God, and he will surprise us. So, when we look at time, history, there were certain dates that caused changes in history. What do I mean? Well, let me quickly give you a quick overview. 586 BC. That's almost 2,500 years ago. The first destruction of the temple by the Babylonians, it really changed the people of Israel. They realized that God will allow a temple to be destroyed? Yes. He allowed us because we were in sin and we were exiled to Babylon. Then again, on the same day, by the way, according to Jewish calendar, on the same day, on 70 AD, we had the destruction of the second temple by the Romans, again. Why? Because of our sin. God allowed this. Well, you know, after 70 AD, the Romans destroyed the temple, destroyed the city. They took all the Israelis that were here, <laughs> slaves as Rome, to the Rome. And they even changed the name of Israel to Palestina. Because as far as the Romans is concerned, the world is concerned, there is no more Israel. That's what they say. But God has not forgotten his people. And after 2,000 years, almost 2,000 years, since 70 AD, the, this beautiful day, the 14th of May, 1948, the birth of the nation of Israel. And our first prime minister, David Ben-Gurion, proclaimed independence, May 14, 1948, in Tel Aviv, Yafo the beautiful city where I was born. Why do I say this? Because from that point, there was no going back. Something happened, changed. Now, same thing happened in June 1967, Milchemet Shesh the Six Day War. We had a great victory, and we took over Judea and Samaria, and Jerusalem, who was 
you know, was divided. You know, Jerusalem was divided for so many years. There, there's the west part, the Israeli part, and the eastern part where the Jordanians were in charge. It was divided. But after the Six Day War, which was a great victory, Jerusalem city became united as one city. And we, the Jewish people, were allowed to go to the Wailing Wall and pray after 2,000 years. Wow. See, those dates are important to history because it brings changes and there's no way to go back. There's no reverse. There's only forward. Then we, the Israelis, you know, after the Six Day War, we were so proud. We say, Kola Kavod Letzal, all the glory to the army, to the IDF. And General Moshe Dayan, remember with the eye, one eye? He was like the big general of the world, blah, blah, blah. We all were was so prideful as Israelis. And God said, uh-huh, okay. On the 5th of October in 73, on Shabbat, Yom Kippur, a high hol the holy holiday, Yom Kippur, day of atonement, our enemies attacked Israel. In the first two, three days, we were in bad shape. We thought the Egyptians and the Syrians are going to kill us, wipe us, and throw, us, throw our bodies to the sea. On Yom Kippur, in the day that we pray and fast and ask God to forgive us, on that day they attacked us and we almost lost. And God shook the people of Israel and realized we better be on our guard. We better watch our borders. It was a wake-up call. And here we are, 50 years later, on Shabbat, just four, four, four days ago, 7 of October, 2023, 50 years later, almost the same thing happened. When the terrorist Hamas from Gaza, hundreds of hundreds of them infiltrated into the south of Israel and killed how much was it? 1,200? The last count? I, I didn't even keep it. It's more. But more than 1,000 killed, murdered, Israelis murdered, innocent children, mothers, fathers, and more than 2,000, 2,500, was it? Wounded? I mean, horrible. Here we are, we're in a war. It was a wake up call. It is a wake up call for us in Israel to guard our borders and be watchmen on the walls. Amen. So after I said all this, as we, I knew that we are coming to do the welcome of glory, I just had so much peace. And I, we even met together as a leadership to Zoom and said, should we do this conference? And we all felt, yes. This is the time for us to come together and worship and pray. Because God is waiting for the one you man to rise up. And we, the locals, yes, we can pray, we can do it. But we need you from the nations to stand with us in such a time as this. The one you man. It's two are better than one. So I went to the archives. We have a picture of me going to the archives. I said, I need to find out what has happened in the last seven years. This has been, this is the seventh year of the Welcome to the King of Glory movement. Keep every month meeting to pray. There's a picture of me in the archives, if we can put it up. It was a lot of, uh, I'm a, I have archives, a lot of files. I'm an old fashioned guy. I like, to have, I like paper, you know, it, it never gets deleted. And I don't need internet for this. I'm an old fashioned guy, I know. <laughs> so when did we all start this? Well, I met with my friend Jeff from Australia in 2015 in a conference in Jerusalem. And I think at that point, he met me and gave me a boomerang. And I said, why are you giving me a boomerang? You know, a boomerang from Australia. You know, those Australians, they have this funny stuff. So he gave me this boomerang and he tells me, the gospel has come out from Jerusalem and it arrived in my country, New Zealand and Solomon Islands and all the Pacific Islands. And now I'm bringing it back to you because the gospel went out and now it's back here and we are here to stand with you to worship the Lord. And I said, thank you. Well, it's a nice boomerang. But then I realized the spiritual significance of this. So, 
Then in June 2016, dear brother George Anoduri from Singapore he invited some of you Israelis. We met, they had, I think it was the Feast of Tabernacles, if I'm not mistaken. No, June, it was June 26. They came to a tour and they met with some few Israelis and said, listen, uh, we want the Pacific, the islands from the far Pacific, they want to come and worship with you next year in 2017 for the 100 years celebration of the Balfour Declaration and the 50 years anniversary of Jerusalem. And I said, okay, whatever, that's fine. He said, yeah, but we want you to organize this. I said, I don't know about that. So we agreed in October 2016, 20, which is uh, seven years ago, I met with Jeff and his wife Jenny in Caesarea. And we had a wonderful meeting just in a restaurant. And I, I agreed. I said, OK, you know what? Let's organize a meeting between the Jewish pastors and you bring some of the Pacific Islands. Let's meet in February, 14 of February, 2017. We'll meet the first meeting, just a meeting in Tel Aviv in a prayer tower. Do we have any pictures of that, Evan? No? OK. Oh, I look there. OK. That's behind us. Yes, so this is our first meeting in a prayer tower in Tel Aviv. And we had Milo and Jeff and, and others from Hawaii, from the Pacific, Elijah. Now you have to understand, here we are and, we are, and they, the, the brothers from the Pacific, to make a long story short, said, listen, this is February in October, Shavuot, sorry, Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, we want to come and worship the Lord with you. And we said, yeah, fine, go ahead to a conference, send us an invitation, we'll come. They said, no, 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 you don't understand. You are, need to be the host, you're the local Israelis, you're the host, you need to host this and invite us. And I looked to the other Israeli leaders, I said, we don't have the budget, we don't have the staff, we don't have the organizations to, to, to handle such a conference. I don't know about this. Who wants to take this responsibility? None of us of the Israelis were raised our hand. You know, we Israelis, we have a lot of chutzpah, we have a lot of guts, but when it comes to this something like that, not everybody wants to take responsibility. I'm being blunt with you. So, um, I said to Milo, Milo, listen, um, we'll, we'll, you know what, give us some, uh, a month or so, we will, we'll meet, we'll pray, we'll come back to you and we'll let you know, I promise you. So we agreed on that. But before we, we, we left, I had some chutzpah, you know, we call it chutzpah, it's Israeli guts, whatever you call it. I said, Milo, if we, f we the Israelis feel that we cannot do that, we cannot organize this and raise the budget and do such, organize such a conference, um, will you still come and do your conference like many Christians do? He, so he rose up. I don't know if Milo is here, but he's a big guy. When I stand next to him, I'm like, uh, <laughs> he's a big guy. He goes, if you don't invite us, we don't come. <laughs> that was very clear. I said, okay. We will pray and get back to you. And that's what happened. We met on the 14th of March, 2017. We met, I believe, uh, I think in Tiberias. And then on the 14th, 18th of April, we met again. And um, the Lord spoke to us, yes, this is of me. Now, why am I saying this is because the scripture the Lord gave me was from Matthew 12 where the wise men from the Far East came to Jerusalem, to the leaders of Jerusalem and to King Herod, and said, we have come, they've come to Jerusalem, we have come to worship the king. And all the Jerusalemites, all the locals said, why are you coming now? It's like they missed it, the timing of God. But those people had, they saw a vision and they saw a star and they heard from God that they need to come to Jerusalem 
to worship the baby, the king, Yeshua, in Bethlehem. And I realized, maybe those are the wise people from the, wise men from the Far East coming to wake us up. And we all felt, yes, this is of God. Remember, guys? We all felt, this is of God. Let's do it. And here we are in April, and we have four, five months, five months to organize a conference. In, during the Feast of Tabernacle, October, in Jerusalem, mission impossible. So we approach Shmuel Smaja from Sarel Tours. He's a big company here. And uh, we talked to him, and in May, he went to Kibbutz Ramat Rachel. And um, we met and prayed, and he signed a contract. And we said, wonderful, we have a place, Kibbutz Ramat Rachel. This is our, after the convocation of Tom Hess, so there shouldn't be any problem. Let's do meet there and everything. We were preparing and happy. And uh, to make a long story short, in August 2017, we get a note that the place is canceled because the religious Orthodox put pressure on the kibbutz. They said they will take the kosher stamp away. And therefore, they gave the contract back to Shmuel Smadja and said, I'm sorry, you cannot meet here. And here we are a month or two before <laughs> Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles, and we have 500, 600, 700 registered, and we don't have a venue, we don't have a place to meet. Isn't that wonderful? And I'm like, God, what have I done? They are coming and we don't have a place for them. It's like we are going to have a celebration in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is full, everything is reserved, everything is packed. There's no room in Jerusalem. Sounds familiar? <laughs> like Joseph and Mary? And they had to go to a <laughs> animals, to a, to a, how do you call it, a vus, uh, a manger in, in, in yeah. Bethlehem. So as I was praying, anyhow, as I was praying, I took a day of fasting right here in Latun on the way to Jerusalem. And the Lord led me to First Chronicles 13, verse 10, where King David was trying to bring the Ark of the Covenant up to Jerusalem. And we know the story. They put it on a new cart with animals, and Uzzah was holding it, and the Lord struck him. He died. And the, Lord, the Ark of the Lord stayed at the house of Obed Edom, Obed Edom, Agiti. And he stayed for three months there, and God blessed him right here in Kiryat Yarim, which is modern day Abu Ghosh. Because God shows, 1 Chronicles 15, verse 2, God shows the Levites to carry by hand the ark of the Lord. And David realized that he, he did a big boo-boo. He messed up, messed up. And I said, this is what we need to do. Because David went back and had the Levites carrying it. And every seventh step, remember, they worshipped. They worshipped the Lord. They were not in a hurry. Driving on a high gear, 100 kilometers an hour to go up Highway 1 to, Tel Aviv, to Jerusalem. They took the time to worship the Lord. So I shared it with the leadership and uh, I called Shmuel from Sarel. He contacted the mayor of Abu Ghosh and guess what? Just a couple of weeks before the conference, the mayor of the conference said, Welcome, Alan Usalan, Baruch Abai, we welcome you. And he signed the contract. And we had a place to meet in Abu Ghosh in a sports center. Never had a conference there. This is a sports center. But there we were, worshiping the Lord in 2017. Now, before that, we had a very important ceremony in the port of Jaffa just a day before. Why? Because remember, Peter went down from Jerusalem down to the port of Jaffa to raise up Tabitha from the dead, Acts chapter 10, remember? And thereafter, they had the revival. Until then, only Jews came to salvation. There were no Gentiles, only Jews. But at the port of Jaffa, after this happened, God gave Peter a vision. Remember, a sheet with wild animals and a voice say, can you three times? And told him, go. And then don't call anyone unclean, talking about people. And the fourth time, he tells him, I have a Roman soldier knocking on your door. Now, in those days, if you're Jewish, Israeli, living in the land, and a Roman soldier knocks on your door, that was not good news. This is the KGB has come to take you to Siberia. 
It was horrible. But God told him, doubt nothing. Go with them. And we know the rest of the story. After the vision he received in Jaffa, he went to Caesarea. And the first known Jews who were saved and baptized was in Caesarea. Amen. So we did a ceremony in the port of Jaffa, welcoming us, the locals, welcoming the nations. Do we have the video? Can we show the video quickly? This happened in the port of Jaffa, one of the oldest ports in the world. By the way, those who may not know, Jaffa, Yafo, is part of Tel Aviv. Today we call it Tel Aviv, Jaffa. Tel Aviv, Yafo. Voice? Father, we thank you that indeed, Yeshua, you are not only the Messiah of Israel, but you are the Lord of all and all families. So we, we as, as local Israelis who live in the land, we welcome you from the nations. We bless you and we bless you as you come here and we say together, Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. We stand in unity, Father, with our brothers from the east, north, west, and uh, south. Yeah. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor for this day, Father, in Yeshua's mighty name. Yes, Father, and now we also stand from the coastlands of the southern continents, and we bring the torch of the gospel back to where it came from originally. Amen. And we set our feet together with our brothers on the highway of holiness, to welcome your glory back to Jerusalem. Amen. Blessing the remnant, messianic remnant, which is the proof of your faithfulness to your nation. We bless them with your favor, with multiplication, and becoming the dominant, dominant move of the Holy Spirit here in this land. Abba Fu, Abba Father, thank you. Thank you for gathering us together. This is a historical moment. This is the moment you're gathering the flame of the gospel back to Jerusalem. The glory of Israel will return back to Israel. The gospel, the good news will come back to Israel. Amen. 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 And we just praise you and thank you, Heavenly Father, for these beloved from the nations that Father have come here to surround us and to intercede for this nation at this time and we cry out together yes. as one heart one voice yes. that lord you would bring salvation to this nation amen, amen. we do this together and we amen. say lord that which you've done in the nation lord let it add amen. to what you're doing in the nation lord amen. and let the fire burn brighter here but it also let it burn brighter in the nations lord amen. And Lord, let revival and the, the, the law come forth from Zion. It happened, and we're here together Amen. Amen. to declare that it reached the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. The fullness of the Gentiles are on the way into the kingdom, and salvation is on its way to Jerusalem, Amen. preparing the way to the King of Amen. glory, Amen. Yeshua, Amen. to come rule yes. from Jerusalem yes. Yes. upon the nation of Israel and all of the Gentiles 
for the glory of God our Father Amen. forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father. Yes. We are standing on the land of promises. Yes. And your promises are yea and amen. amen. Let your kingdom come. Amen. Let your, your will, will be done, done on earth here as it, as it is, is in heaven. heaven. In Jesus' name, Yeshua Amashur. Israeli pastors, local pastors, welcoming the pastors from the nations and leaders from the nations from all four corners of the earth. We're here to glorify you. We're here to honor you. We're here to give you all the glory and the honor. You are worthy of all our praise that the gospel is returning back to the homeland. And we thank you, Lord, that indeed you are faithful God. What you have promised in the scriptures, you will fulfill. Yes. That all Israel shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Beautiful, huh? And from there, we went up to Kriyat Yarim, to Abu Ghosh, and we had a great opening, and we had the mayor of Abu Ghosh welcoming us, welcoming all the Jews and the Arabs and the nations, and said, this is wonderful, right here in Abu Ghosh, in Kriyat Yarim. And there we celebrated 100 years of the Balfour Declaration and 50 years of the unification of Jerusalem. And um, also important thing is that somebody handed me an old, an old key. I should have brought it, I forgot. An old key, and we felt that we need to do a prophetic ceremony by coming together, Jews and Arabs, and taking the key and say, open the keys, let the heavens come down. Okay, do we have the video of the conference? Evan, yes? Let's, let's, show, let's see the video. We as the one new man, Jews and non-Jews and Jews and Arabs are doing this together. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, B'Shem Yeshua Mashiach. And let the King of Glory come back. Welcome the King of Glory. We're all his children. We are the family of God. From heaven. He gave us his name. We ask you to forgive us. Forgive us, Father. Have mercy on us. Let, let Africa rise again. Let me confess our sin before you. Wholeness, Shlemut, healing refua, to the children and the babies of Africa. In the name of Yeshua, of Yeshua. blessing of the women of this Israel. <laughs> A 
of the messianic remnant here in the land of Israel and the remnant of every nation in the world. You see, for all of history, there were two ways of looking at the book of Acts. Some people said it was just history, but it ceased to be important to us. Or other people would say it's a pattern for us that we can still live out today. But something new is happening now. It's not just a pattern. It's the period of time we're living in. And we just want to give you all the praise, uh, all the honor, uh, all the glory. which is the foundation for the glory to come. When we think of Moses, we remember the golden calf and the breaking of the covenant and the intercession of Moses, a unique intercession in so many ways. But at the bottom line of his intercession, of course, was that God would go up with the children of Israel that his presence would go with the nation. That was his cry, that God would show him his way. Moses was a man of passion for God. Yevachecha Adonai v'yishmerecha Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'yechuneka Yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom Ha'shalom shel sa shalom Yeshua HaMashiach Adonainu V'kulam omrim Amen May the peace of God You know, as I watch this video, you know, there's few people there that are not with us anymore. They're with the Lord now. Yeah. But it was, uh, by the way, we finished the conference. We were two days or three days in Abu Ghosh. And the last meeting we had was right here on Friday, right here in the pavilion. And that's how we concluded the conference the gathering. So we decided to continue as an Israeli to meet every month and pray. We say it's wonderful that we have Christians from all over the world praying for us and praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We need that. But this is our backyard. <laughs> we, the Israelis, we need to stand as watchmen and pray once a month and pray for our nation, pray for the salvation all over of Israel. And we start faithfully every month, meeting in different places. Uh, we met, uh, for example, in Alon More, which is a, we did a prophetic act, renewing the covenant with God. Um, by the way, right after this, President Trump moved the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, which we, we see it related. And then um, there was also in um, May, there was the celebration 70 years of the independence for Israel, and then 2018, and then in May 2018, Binyamin went to Samoa and uh, had a wonderful time there in Samoa and meeting the prime minister. And in August, a few months later, me and my family, we went to Samoa and uh, encouraged the Samoan and the, the, the islanders and, and the prime minister to come to Israel, and he did later on. He came and met our prime minister, Bibi Netanyahu. And then in October 2018, one year after the conference, we had been faithfully meeting every month. We met in, uh, I believe, Kilata Carmel in Haifa. And we said, uh, well, should we continue? And everyone said, yes. 
And then the Lord gave us a word. And the word was, God is doing a new thing among us. There is such a unity and love among us. God is doing something new. And we are going to continue meeting faithfully every month. And we have been doing so. Then in December 2018... Somebody said, we should do another conference. And so he said, well, we don't know. Let's have a meeting in the 11th of December in Malea Hamisha, which is just above Abu Ghosh. And we met some of us. We shared what's going on and all this. And we didn't know, should we do a conference? Should we not do a conference? The most important is we continue to meet every month to pray. But then the Lord woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and gave me a dream. And in the dream, I shared it in the morning with my brothers. I said, in the dream, I found myself in the Galilee, in an Arab village, and the people there opened their homes, and, and there was such a hospitality and food and everything. And, and I said, I don't know why I said this, but I feel we need to go to Galilee. And all our brothers from the Galilee, remember? Nizartuma from Nazareth, Rania, uh, Claude from Tiberias, uh, K K K uh, Karen uh, Davis from K Carmel, congregation, all the Galileans, all the North people said, yes, it's time for you to come up to Galilee. And we said, okay. And that's where we set the motion to meet for the welcome the King of Glory in Nazareth. Now, to make a long story short, why am I sharing all this? Is because something important I want to share with this is that it's wonderful when we have people coming from the nations and praying for us. And we need that. We need you to stand with us and pray. But you cannot repent for the sin of our forefathers. We need to take our responsibility and repent for the sin of our forefathers rejecting our Messiah, Yeshua. And this is what we did in Nazareth. In Nazareth, we went to the the mountain where they, remember after Yeshua opened the scroll and read from this, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He was anointing me and so forth. And then he rolled the scroll and then they were angry and they wanted to kick him out. Why? Because he said, it's time to go to the nations. They didn't want that. And they want to throw him from the cliff. And we felt we need to go there as Israelis, as locals, and repent there. We went to that mountain and we said, We'll be there for 10 minutes, we do a prayer, and we'll see what happens. Well, we did, and guess what? The Spirit of God fell on that place, and we were on our floors for, two, I think, two hours. On our floors, crying out to the Lord, Lord, forgive us for it. And then, we had the nations and the Arab brothers standing and saying, we repent of replacement theology. And after those few hours of repentance, we went back to the hall at the Nazareth, next to the, that mountain, Arakvitsa, how do you say Arakvitsa? Arakvitsa. Mount Precipice, thank you, merci beaucoup. So, when, after we did this, we went to the hotel and we served communion, the Lord's Supper. And there we start proclaiming, blowing the shofars, saying, here we are, one body, there is one head, his name is Yeshua, we are one body, the one you man, welcoming the King of glory. We start singing, Baruch Abba B'Shem Adonai, blessed are you who come in the name of the Lord. And the Spirit of God just fell in that place, and we were just all worshiping the Lord in total unity and love. And the presence of God was so precious. This was in Nazareth, 2019. And one thing we also did, we read the whole chapter of Isaiah 60. Because remember, Yeshua read just a few, verse, the few verses in the beginning and stopped. And we talked about, we read the whole chapter talking about the vengeance of the Lord. And we had no clue what it means. And right after this, what happened? Corona hit the world. Do we have the video ready for the Welcome to King of Glory 2019? Let's show that.
As we say in Hebrew, ברוכים הבאים בשם אדוני. Blessed are you who have come in the name of the Lord. Welcome! We join our hearts with our messianic leaders to welcome the nations in the city of the great king. Jew and Arab and the nations coming together as one new man, Father. Uh, Lord, there you said you have commanded a blessing. So we thank you for the anointing because you said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring the good news, set the captives free. We are one family and I believe that he's coming back soon and we need to be ready. the glory and the honor forever and ever. Amen. The Lord of hosts, Adonai Tzavaot, He is the King of glory, hallelujah! Lord, you are doing something in our midst. This is not just a conference. If it's born of God, it's going to grow and it's going to develop and it's going to bring forth glorious fruit. Hallelujah. Where death is not a costly thing Oh, what a beautiful thing We believe your word, you will have a bride A global bride that will be glorious Paul said, there's three things, you know There's faith, hope and love But the greatest of all is Hallelujah, we need the baptism of love country to see the sun yes. when the day ends <laughs> <laughs> and for the rest of Polynesia and the Pacific. Hallelujah. <laughs> From the house of the South Netanya Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On behalf of my nation, I repent for rejecting Israel, for rejecting the Jewish people, Amen. for rejecting your identity as a Jew, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. A new day in new Messiah. Day. In Yeshua's name we pray.
the Lord said like this, don't be afraid to go into the deeper water. Don't be afraid of my presence because the Holy Spirit is flowing from the heart of Yeshua. Welcome, King of Glory. How we thank you for all that you have done. We promised to give you the menorah, to take it from here to the ends of the world, and all of the rest of us will go up behind them to support them, okay? Seven years. Let's give God the glory. Amen. You know, when I look back, we have been like a moving tabernacle all over Israel. Quickly, let me just read to you the places. We started in, in, in Adonai Roy Dugit Center in Tel Aviv. Then we have been in the, Kila, the congregation Lamb on Mount of Zion at Christ Church in Jerusalem. We were in the Morning Star in Tiberias, a Mayan congregation in Kfar Saba, a Carmel congregation in Haifa, Nazarene Church in Nazareth, Tents of Mercy in the Krayot Haifa, Melech HaKavod, King of Glory in the Krayot Haifa, Katsir Asher in Akko, um, Avat Yeshua in Jerusalem, King of Kings, Jerusalem, Shemen Sasson, Jerusalem, Rivav Israel, Yad HaShemona, Teilatia, Rishon Lezion, Irachim Shderot in the south, uh, House of Prayer in Nazareth, Oil Tfila, the Tent of Prayer in Ashdod. We also did a prayer in the port of Jaffa and also uh, a prophetic prayer in Akko, in the port of Akko. We've been also in Alon More, which is uh, where the, it's in front of the mountain of the blessing and the curses, and we renew our covenant there. And we also went by the Knesset and prayed by the parliament. I mean, this is just the ones that I picked, I probably missed a few. But all over the land, we have been a moving tabernacle, praying to the God of Israel. And I want you to know there's such a unity. We are about more than 100 or so, more than 100 on our WhatsApp group, leaders and, and intercession, intercessors. And we have been meeting faithfully for this is the seventh year and we meet in total harmony, love, and unity because our goal is not to discuss theology. Forget this. Well, our goal is what? Is to pray and intercede for the salvation of Israel until all Israel is saved. So how do I finish this beautiful story? Well, my wife and I, a month ago, we went to Solomon Islands. I went with my whole family there. And uh, the people in the Solomon Islands believe that this, this is the, large, the, last, the, late, the last people group that received the gospel. So the gospel has went out from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the port of Jaffa, the port of Caesarea, to the nations, and as we arrived all the way to the other side of, of, of Israel, in the Solomon Islands, and we went there to honor our brothers there in the Pacific. And one of the things that they did, which was so special, is that they did a ceremony and made a statement that they uh, divorced themselves from worship of paganism and worship of the idols, their, their ancestors. And many of you are here. And one of the things that's been in their heart is to bring this statement back to Jerusalem. Meanwhile, we, the locals, have been working on a statement with the Israelis to make a statement of renewing our covenant with God. And that's the reason we have this. 
I'm not interested in having another conference. Trust me, it's, it's a lot of work. I don't need this headache. But when God is in it, is in it, he goes before us. We were, even last night, we were concerned, what are we going to, listen to this, how, what are we going to do? We have, I don't know, 300, 250 people. We are allowed only 50 people in one hall. We have only two or three. What are we going to do? Well, we have to spread them all over Jerusalem in groups of 50 because there's nothing we can do. We have to follow the, abide the laws of the country. Well, I'm very happy to announce to you guys that we have different seven rooms that we have groups and all in this area and you don't have to run far away and we're all very close by and it's a live stream and it's happening here we are together in spite of the restrictions and we're here to worship the king of kings and the lord of lords and we are going to make this renewing of the covenant today and we're going to have some nations today and we're going to have some nations tomorrow because I believe this pleases God. Let me share this. The groom is waiting for his bride. You know, somebody told me, and I said, this is so true. The world is raging and preparing for war. But the heavens and the king of the universe is preparing a wedding for the, wedding for the lamb. And we are joining the groom, King Jesus, Yeshua. And we are preparing ourselves because God wants to have a, a bride without spot and wrinkle. And the bride, if you like it or not, has a Jewish side and a non-Jewish side. And together, we make the one new man. So if you like it or not, we are stuck together. Forever. Amen. Hallelujah. So, do we have a team ready to do worship so we can move to the next session? I'm excited. I don't know about you, I'm excited. You know that all the things that we're worried about the administration, and I'm sorry for the, the beginning, all this, but you know, everything is in place, everything is at peace, and we're moving forward as the Holy Spirit is leading us. And you know what, I believe the favor of the Lord is upon us in the midst of all this. And we will need to take also time to pray whenever we see fit in the schedule. We need to take time and pray for a country that is in the middle of a war. Okay? Amen. I think I'm done. <laughs> I'm just going to make a, another quick announcement just to thank God everything is peaceful. People are in their rooms, and uh, we still have a few challenges. Just in your, in your heart, be praying as we go through the conference later this afternoon and evening. There may be sh some changes, uh, some really positive changes, perhaps. Uh, we're working on it, and we just pray. Join me in prayer right now, okay? Let's put all of our hearts together, both for the, the country and for this situation. Lord, we thank you that you've called us to this time, Lord. You appointed this time, Lord, and you allowed by your grace all of our brothers and sisters to come here. And there are many out there on the internet who are watching and praying with us. And Lord, we, you've brought us here to join and to be the one new man and to be the bride and to be the warring warrior bride who also is about your business and about your heart. Lord, we pray right now for success against the enemy, first and foremost in the heavenly places. Lord, we know that first and foremost, Lord, your word tells us that our, our battle is not with flesh and blood. And Lord, we know that there are great enemies and principalities out there, religious ones uh, who are against your people and against Messiah and against the knowledge of the Son of God. And we wanna lift up the name of the Son of God and we continue to do so 
for him to be triumphant over his enemies, Lord. You said you've, uh, for a short time, Lord, this is, uh, this is the situation, but you are bringing all of, of his enemies to submit and to bow under his feet at his footstool. And so we say yes and amen to that. And Lord, we say yes and amen to your plans for this conference and for the logistics. Lord, thank you that we're together right now uh, electronically. But we pray, Lord, that we might even be able to be together, Lord, uh, in this room, all of us. Lord, that's, may that be possible. Lord, thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for the authorities here and the government and the Ministry of Defense and this building who have been very gracious and understanding and are helping us and want to help us do the right thing for everyone's safety. Thank you, Lord. B'Shem Yeshua. Amen. Now what we'd like to ask, uh, and in the other rooms you can, uh, uh, we hope you'll be able to get this, we're going to ask all of our Solomon Island friends to come and quickly come to the front. Can we all stand up? Everyone in the room, let's stand together. We're going to have a song of worship before Benjamin comes to share the word with us. And our Solomon Island friends, could you come down here to the front real quickly? We're going to ask you to sing a song together to lead us into worship. A uh, song from you. I believe, is there Stephen here that, as the Milo had talked to? Yeah, just come quickly. Or on the stage, come up on the stage. Quick, just quickly come up on the stage. We want to see your beautiful faces here. <laughs> those in the other rooms need to be able to see you, and, and those in Israel who will look at this afterwards want to be able to see you. Just quickly come on up here. And we want to... Add, we want to thank the Lord that you have come from the end of the earth. And the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 62, verse 11, the Lord has made a proclamation to the ends of the earth, to the end of the earth. So the Lord himself proclaimed to these people at the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, see your savior comes. And right now in this time of war, in this time where Israel is in war, besieged, God has sent you from the ends of the earth and you've persevered and gone through so much to get here in this time of war. And it says that you from the end of the earth, then you say to the daughter Zion, to Jerusalem, see your savior comes. Hallelujah. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. So we thank you for coming and proclaiming to us that the Lord is with us here in Israel, that the Lord is with Jerusalem, and that the Lord will bring his retribution, his recompense upon his enemies, and the Lord will bring a reward to Zion, which is ultimately him, <laughs> the knowledge of him, and you're proclaiming it from the ends of the earth. So we thank you and we bless you. And just uh, maybe maybe two songs of just worship, just lead us in worship and proclaim the words of stuff. From the ends of the earth, we, we sing, sing glory. Those who dwell in the west, we his majesty. We be islands of the sea, we sing glory, glory to the righteous one. From the ends of the earth, we sing We sing glory, glory to the righteous one from the ends, from the ends of the earth. We sing glory, those 
Every people 
say to the daughters of Zion, rejoice. You shall be called the Holy One, the redeemed of the Lord. And his name shall be called his sword after. Father, we thank you and we glorify your holy name. And everyone agree with me and say it. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. All the way from the Solomon Islands. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, a question was raised up. Why are we meeting in Jerusalem? Why not in New York or Hawaii? I'll go for Hawaii. <laughs> but there is a reason we meet in Jerusalem and worship the Lord, the King of this city, the King of Jerusalem, King of kings and Lord of lords, Yeshua HaMashiach. So we'd like to ask our dear brother, Benjamin Berger, to come and share with us the word. בנימין, אתה רוצה את זה ביד או אתה רוצה פה? על זה? There's a journey that began about 2,000 years ago. It began here in Jerusalem, and it's been a long pilgrimage, a very long pilgrimage, many stations, many places where wonderful things happened, stations where not such wonderful things happened. And we, it has been moving in a circular form. And now it's coming back to Jerusalem. And we have, we're experiencing in this movement of welcoming the King of Glory that we are an Alpha and Omega movement. The beginning and the end are meeting together. Not only are we meeting together, we're walking together. We're walking together towards a goal, a wonderful, wonderful goal, a goal that has been prepared from before the foundations of the world by our wonderful God, our wonderful Messiah, and the glorious Holy Spirit. And we want to really understand more deeply what the Lord is preparing for us and, and what we are walking towards. We are living now at a moment in Israel's history that's different from anything we've ever experienced. We've been through wars, we've been through much suffering, but we've never experienced anything like what we're experiencing now. There's a lot of sorrow in the land, there's a lot of people asking, e Big, big questions, not understanding what is happening. There's a battle going on, on the earth and in heaven. A mighty, mighty battle, and not only in Israel, but all over the world. But Israel is a focal point, and what happens here is going to affect all of humanity. And we, 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 we sense that when we who live here 
we sense that whatever happens here is like throwing a stone into water and there are rings that go outward and will cover the whole earth and are covering the whole earth. So what is happening in these days is not something just local. It is local, it is here, but it has repercussions that are global. And because it's part of the plan of God, we, we are, we're experiencing the demonic forces being released, but there's also a great battle taking place in heaven between Michael, as, as has been named, and his angels against the dragon. This is, hap this is taking place in heaven right now, and we're part of that battle. And we are marching together towards the goal, and Satan will not be able to, in any way, uh, stop or hinder what God has been doing from since before the foundations of the world, actually. And I want to today uh, focus upon what, what, what does it mean that we're moving towards Jerusalem. We are in Jerusalem, but we're moving spiritually towards a goal. And we need to understand that goal. And I want to read uh, some scriptures from Exodus. This is from the Song of Moses. And we remember that Israel was uh, in slavery in Egypt for 400 years. That's a long time. But God promised deliverance and it came, and especially through his servant Moses. And we remember the story of Israel coming towards, leaving Egypt finally, and coming towards the Red Sea and suddenly realizing we can't go any further. And the people began to complain and the people began to think, well, maybe it would have been better to die in Egypt than to get to this place where the Egyptians are coming after us and uh, we can't go forward. And the Lord speaks to Moses and tells him to take his rod, lift it up over the sea and proclaim the salvation of God. And he does that and the sea opens up. Not only does it open up, but the Lord makes a path through the sea because it probably would have been very rocky and bumpy under the sea. But the Lord makes a path and the Israelites, the whole nation, the old, the young, the animals, all that they had, they passed through the sea and there are two walls of water on both sides. A great miracle takes place because we have to do with a God who is supernatural. He created the natural, but he's above the natural. He is supernatural. And he demonstrated it with the exodus from Egypt. And Israel passes over, and then the enemy comes pursuing them, thinking that they're going to also cross over, but it doesn't work for them. The sea closes up and they are drowned. And so Israel sings this wonderful song. We call it the Song of Moses. And speaks about, sings about, the glories, the glorious things that God has done. Giving glory to God. He is the faithful God. He is the delivering God. He is the God who keeps his word. He is the God who is our God, and we are his people. So they're singing this song. And I want to read the last verses of the Song of Moses because I think they are very, very important for us as we are here in Jerusalem today to understand more deeply the, what, was, what, what, what is in the heart of God that was expressed through the people of Israel as they crossed over to the other side. And it's from the last verses, uh, from verse 16 to verse 18, the middle of verse 16, where it says, Till your people pass over, O Lord. Till the people pass over whom you have purchased. 
So this is the cry, till your people, the entire people of God, the true people of God, pass over. And the Hebrew word for uh, pass, passing over is la'avo. And it, it's the same root for the word Hebrew, aval, ivri. So we are, the, we are the, the Hebrews. The Hebrews are the people who have crossed over to the other side. The people, the people that who are the Hebrews are the people who have left behind that which does not belong to God and have crossed over to the other side following the Lord to the goal that he has prepared for us. So we are Hebrews and that's what they're saying, that they, that till your people pass over. We know that this was always the goal. We see this when the Israelites crossed over the Jordan uh, 40 years later, that they took 12 stones out of the Jordan and built a monument uh, which, which proclaimed the fact that Israel, the entire nation, had crossed over to the other side. There were 12 stones because there were 12 tribes of Israel. So this is always something that is deeply in the heart of God, for his people to cross over. Abraham crossed over. Abraham left behind everything that was idolatrous, everything that belonged to a world that did not know the living God. And he hears the call of God, and he follows God, and he crosses over into the land that God has prepared for him and his descendants. So this is, this is something like that, that is happening with the entire nation of Israel. And then it says, whom you have purchased, God has purchased us. We are his possession. He has paid the price with his precious blood. We are the possession of God and we need to understand that and constantly believe that and proclaim that to the enemy who says you belong to me. No, we don't belong to you. The price has been paid. We are God's possession. You will bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance. So they're singing, Lord, you will bring your people in to the mountain of your inheritance. So they're already looking forward to what is going to happen. They're going to go to the special mountain that God has chosen. It is the mountain of his inheritance. The place, O Lord, which you have made for your own dwelling. On that mountain, Lord, you have prepared a place for your own dwelling, the house of God on the mountain of your inheritance. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. This house, this sanctuary of God is not something that human hands have, have built. It's not something that men have designed. It's something that God himself has prepared. It is the house of God. This was the goal. This was the goal as they left Egypt. They were already looking towards this wonderful goal, the goal that, that the Lord is preparing, a house to dwell among the people of God. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. This God is the only God. He is the true God and he shall reign forever and ever and ever. So this is so important for us to see that already when they were leaving Egypt, they already saw forward to the goal that God was preparing. And we are part of that goal. We're, we are moving, this is the last chapter of this pilgrimage that began 2,000 years ago. And it is the coming together of the people of God in a way that it hasn't happened since the beginning when the church was born. And we really want to understand, we really understand, want to understand what the Lord is preparing for us. We have come back to Jerusalem, and of course the battle will rage, rage mightily uh, as we approach the, the, the time that the Lord is going to come again. The battle is because the end, if, if there's one thing the enemy does not want, 
It is that God reaches his goal. And this is so important for us to know that we serve a God who, is, who, who always finishes what he began. And if we look back towards the, um, the creation of the world, we see that the Lord created the world in six days, literally six days, not six million, 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 million years, but six days, days that we know. Why? Because he's almighty and he spoke the word and it was. And that is why he created the world in six days. And when it was all finished, after every day he said it was good, but when it was all finished on the sixth day, he said it was very good. And when God says it's very good, it means it's very good. There's nothing lacking. It is perfect. It is the perfect work of the Lord. And then the Lord rested. Then the Lord rested. That is the Shabbat. The Shabbat is a testimony to the fact that God created the world in six days. It was a perfect creation and he could rest. He could look at his creation and say, I have nothing to add. It's just what it should be. Everything is there, nothing is missing. And this is so important for us to understand about what God is doing in the, in, with his people today. With Israel, as much as we're going through suffering now, and we will probably go through much more suffering, but suffering is not the end of the story. He allows for suffering because we have sinned, because we have turned away from him, because we have worshiped other gods. And so in order to bring us back to himself, he will allow some, some of these terrible things to happen until we begin to turn our heads and lift our eyes to heaven and know that our help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth and from no other place. This is, this, is, this, is what, this is what God is going to bring Israel to. But he's also bringing the part of the, the he's bringing the church the, of the nations also back to Jerusalem together with us. And we are walking together as the one people of God and, and, th and this will continue. But we really need to understand and I want to read from a psalm which I believe really um, expresses, it, it expresses the heart of King David, but it also expresses the heart of God. It's Psalm 132, and I'm going to read some verses from it. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not go into the chamber of my house or go up to the comfort of my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty God of Jacob. Behold, we heard of it in Ephrata. We found it in the fields of the woods. Let us, go, let us go into his tabernacle. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and your saints shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away your face from your anointed. The Lord has sworn a truth it, to David. He will not turn from it. I will, set upon, I will set you upon the throne, the fruit of your body. If your sons will keep my covenant and my testimony, which I shall teach them, their sons also shall sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. We want to really understand what what this psalm is saying. We remember we heard something today about the Ark of the Covenant. 
David had a great burden, and it was to bring the Ark of the Covenant up to Zion, up to Jerusalem. Why was this so terribly important to David? The Ark of the Covenant had been with the Israelites in the desert, where it was, where it was made according to the divine pattern. There had been many stations in the desert, in the wilderness, and then it rested in Shiloh in, in, when after, in the time of Joshua. And David wanted to bring the Ark up to Jerusalem. What did David understand? Well, we know that it, within the Ark of the Covenant were the Ten Commandments. This was the covenant that God had made with Israel. This was the statement that was saying, we are taking this land and we have this city of Jerusalem as our capital, not because we have won it in a battle, not because we desire it, but because the Lord has promised this and the Lord has accomplished this. And when David brought the ark up to Jerusalem, he was saying, the throne of God is now in Jerusalem. Because the ark of the covenant contained the tablets, but there were also the two cherubim above the ark, and the Lord dwelt between the cherubim. So it was actually the throne of God in the Old Testament upon the earth. And David wanted, David understood this was so important to bring up the ark of the covenant to its resting place to its final station, it needed to travel no longer. And God was enthroned in Jerusalem, in the tabernacle, and later when Solomon built the temple. Emmanuel, God with us. And Jerusalem therefore became the capital of the nation of Israel because the throne of God was in Jerusalem. That is so important for us to understand because there's no other place on planet Earth like the city of Jerusalem because here the Lord will be enthroned. Here the Lord will extend his kingdom from Jerusalem to the very ends of the earth. The Lord has put his seal upon this city. His name is upon this city. It is engraved in the stones of this city, the name of our God. And our Lord and our God was crucified in this city. And our Lord and our God raised from the dead, was raised from the dead in the city of Jerusalem. And from here, from the Mount of Olives, he ascended into heaven. And from there, he poured out the Holy Spirit upon 120 that were gathered together, 120 faithful followers of the Lord Yeshua. They waited in Jerusalem. They didn't do anything. He said, wait in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father. And it came, it came on Shavuot, it came on Pentecost, and as tongues of fire. And they were filled, they were filled with the Spirit of the living God. And the church, the church, the house of God was born. And the tabernacle of David was raised up. What was the tabernacle of David? Well. There, there are several things we understand about it. One was that David, went, when he brought up the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, he, he built a little tabernacle for it, and the Ark of the Covenant rested there. But it's even, but it's, but we, I have to understand, it was that, but it was the house of David, the, the household of David, up, upon which Messiah would ultimately sit on the throne because we remember that when the angel Gabriel came to Mary, he said, God will give him the throne of his father, David. And that is what the tabernacle of David is. The tabernacle of David is the house of David and within that tabernacle is the throne of God, is the throne of the Messiah where Yeshua will be seated and will be crowned when he returns by his people who will say, Blessed are you who comes in the name of the Lord. The Jewish nation that has rejected him, that has exiled him, we have kept him out. We are going to say, 
Blessed are you, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and we will bow down and worship him as our king. Now that is, that is how the church began. The church began when the tabernacle of David was raised up. It meant that the kingdom of God came in a very real way when that early church was born. They were one heart, they were one spirit, they had all things in common, there was holiness there, we, we remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira, how when they lied to the Holy Spirit, the judgment of God came upon them because the Lord wanted to maintain that standard of holiness in his church, of purity, of righteousness, of, of unity, the unity that Jesus prayed for. We have that example in the very early church. And it was, it was there in Jerusalem that, the, that the, the apostles were challenged with the question, well, what about these Gentiles that especially the, the apostle Paul was, was, was beginning to uh, reach and, and, and they were coming to faith in Messiah? What do we do with them? Is this right? Is this right? Because the, we have been the people of God for all centuries, the Gentiles have never known the Lord. God made a covenant with us on Mount Sinai. What about these Gentiles? And so that was the question in Jerusalem. And the, the apostles understood, they understood that now something new had taken place. Something that had never taken place before. The heavens had opened up and the heavens had sanctified all the nations through the blood of Messiah. And so they understood that the church consists of the firstborn, the Hebrews, the Israelites, the Jews, and now the nations, the universal, who have been joined to them and have become one people of God. Now this is what the early church understood because they were, they were under the, the power of the Holy Spirit. They were not religious. They didn't have fixed ideas. They understood that something was in motion, that God was doing something new, something that goes back to Abraham because God said to Abraham, you will be a father of many nations and through you all the nations of the world will be blessed. They understood this and they found the, they found the scripture in Amos about the raising up of the fallen tabernacle of David and they understood that now the Israelites were in there but now the nations are coming into the tabernacle of David and, 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 and God is being glorified because it, it represents the redemption of all of humanity, the salvation that can come to all of humanity. This happened in Jerusalem and this was glorious and heaven was pleased. And it happened at a time when there was turmoil all around. They, they, they were Israelites that were fighting with each other. They were under the Roman, the, uh, under, under the Roman control. The, Roman, the Romans were very brutal and very hard masters. And Israel was under Rome. But in the midst of all of this darkness, there was an island of light. There was an island of, 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 of where the glory of God was manifested. And that is why when the apostles and the, and the, and the followers of the Lord went out and preached to the nation of Israel, even though they knew that Jesus was crucified and that the religious leaders rejected him, thousands came to the faith because they knew that these simple men from Galilee, they are, they are not just speaking some new doctrine, they are speaking the word of God. The word of God is coming through their mouths and they came under conviction and they repented and they were baptized and they were added to the church. So this is, this is what happened in Jerusalem. The Lord died in Jerusalem. He rose from the dead in Jerusalem. He ascended from heaven in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit was poured out in Jerusalem. The church was born in Jerusalem, a church that understood that now salvation had come to, for all of humanity, to the Jew first and then to the Greek, but to all of humanity. And God had joined together where there was enmity for centuries and centuries and centuries between the Jews and the nations. Now they had become one in Messiah Yeshua. So the gospel went out. 
it went out and many changes took place and some of these changes were very very terrible changes one of the big changes that took place was what we call replacement theology what is replacement theology how did it how did it ever happen well the churches were being established among the nations and then in the year 70 the temple was destroyed and the Jewish people were beginning to be dispersed through all of the world. And a little bit later, around the year 130, Hadrian comes in and finishes the job. He flattens out Jerusalem. He calls it Alio Capitolina and calls the nation, it's no longer Judea, it is now called Palestine. From the word Philistines. And Philistines have to do with the area of Gaza that we are dealing with today. So this is, we need to see how these things come together. And so the understanding was, well, the Jews, they, they, they're, they're guilty. They have rejected their Messiah. They forgot that the first church was a Jewish church, but that's, the Jews are guilty. And we are now the people of God. We are the new Israel. God has divorced his first wife and he's married another and it's us. We are now his wife. They are divorced. They, they have no longer any part in the plan of God, in the fulfillment of God's purposes. And so we get this major, major division between Israel and the church of Jesus Christ. And this, this very unfortunate thing was passed down even beyond what we call the Catholic Church. It went into Protestantism and uh, on, on a very conscious level and often on the subconscious level. And it created this division that Jesus came to heal the division, to bring together the humanity in him and through the cross and through his resurrection. And the very opposite took place. And so the church takes on a different character because something is missing from the church. And it, and it is the Hebrews, they're missing. And, if, and, and, and the church forgets that Yeshua himself was a Hebrew, he was a Jew. The church forgets that the apostles, they were Jews. Forgets that they received the gospel from Paul, who was a Jewish man, a man who was an enemy of the church, but who was transformed when he met the Messiah, and he is the, was the apostle to the Gentiles. The church forgot this entirely. And so Jesus takes on a different face. He no longer has what I would call a Hebrew face or a Jewish face. He becomes a Gentile. And of course, the Lord has been present with his church throughout 2,000 years, even though this division has taken place. The Lord is f faithful. There have been saints in the church throughout the centuries, but something has gone wrong. Something has been missing. God has not been able to fulfill his purposes and to reveal the fullness of his salvation in Yeshua because of this division. And so from this first major division come the other divisions, the divisions between the church, the Latin church and the uh, church of Constantinople. Then comes a division between the Latin church, the Catholic church and what we call the Protestant church with Luther. And then in the Lutheran church comes many more divisions in the Protestant church. Until today, we have something like a hundred I think several hundred thousand denominations today. It's unbelievable, but this is what has happened. But God is a God who finishes what he began. And so the church did not believe that the Jewish people would ever come back to the land of Israel. They said it's finished with them, that they have no more place in, my, in God's plan. And so we have the Holocaust, where six million Jews were murdered brutally. And what is happening, what we are experiencing in these days, reminds the people of Israel of the Holocaust, because the slaughter that has taken place in these days is very much like what happened in the Holocaust. But as a result of that, the nations of the world, for a short moment of time, recognized 
in the United Nations that the Jewish people need to have a homeland and so that they could return to the land of Israel. But that is only the beginning. It is only the beginning because it but a most important beginning, an amazing beginning, uh, if we consider that the Hebrew language was at most a liturgical language and now is the spoken language of the land, a language has been resurrected from the dead, a people has been resurrected from the dead, but a people still who need, who need to be born of the Spirit of God, a people that have to be, re be reborn and come to know their Lord, and come to know their Messiah, and to recognize him. He's not the God of the Gentiles. He is our God first. He's also theirs, but he's our God. And we see his face. We look into his face, and we recognize him. He really is the son of David. He really is the promised Messiah. He really is the one that we that we have cursed and we have rejected and our people will fall down on their faces and weep and repent and repent because we have rejected our king we have rejected by rejecting our king we have rejected our god and we will receive him deeply into our hearts and as we are joined together with the remnant from the from the nations that recognize the calling of God upon Israel, upon the people of Israel, upon, upon the land of Israel, something new is being birthed. Something that the, that the apostles already understood nearly 2,000 years ago, but it's being birthed again now. And what is it that, what is it that God wants to do? And we go back to those scriptures in, in Exodus when the Israelites passed through the Red Sea and they said, and saw in the spirit the sanctuary that God wants to, will build in Jerusalem. Now, what does that say to us? What was there in Israel that was unique, that was different from all other nations? Well, firstly, because we believed in the only true God, but also because there was only one house of God in Israel. There were 12 tribes. Each tribe was different. Each tribe had a different parcel of land in, in, in the land of Israel, but there was one house of God. And three times a year, the men in Israel had to go up to Jerusalem to worship at the one house of God, recognizing there is one God and there is one people of God, made up of 12 tribes, but one people of God. And what is God doing now in Jerusalem and in the land of Israel? He is restoring his house, his one house. There are not many churches. There's only one church, and it is the one house of God. And there has to be a place where that is manifested on planet Earth to bring together the remnant, the holy remnant of God into one. There has to be one place. And what is that place? It is the place where the church was born because all who have been born again of the Spirit of God have been born in Zion. Even if you come from the Solomon Islands and you're a child of God, you were born in Zion. You were born in Zion when the church was born, and you are descendants of the original believers, but you were born in Zion. Your birth certificate is in Zion. So Zion is the focal point on planet Earth where everything comes together in one. And I also believe it's important for us, especially as believers, because we are always focusing Oh, well, there's the heavenly Zion, but the, the earthly Zion, that's something else. We need to understand something. In the heart of God, there was always to, it was always in his heart to bring heaven and earth together. We, when we say the word Yerushalayim, we're actually talking about two Jerusalems. 
If you look in the Bible, if you can read Hebrew, whenever it talks about Jerusalem in the Bible, I would say 99% of the time, it uses the word Yerushalayim, which means Jerusalem here on the earth. Wholeness, it's Shalem means wholeness, but it's here on the earth. When we say Yerushalayim, we are talking about two Jerusalems, the heavenly one and the earthly one, but we're saying that come together. This has always been God's goal, to bring heaven and earth together. That is his goal. When he created Adam, that, that's what happened. And when Yeshua came into the world, heaven and earth came together. He is the son of man, and he's also the son of God. And he's also God the son. The two have come together in one. This has always been the goal of God. And this is his goal for Zion, and that goal will be reached. And the things that we have seen today in the videos, they're all, they're all very, very... Um, stimulating and they encourage us greatly because we see we're on a pilgrimage together something is going on something unique is going on we have been joined together and we are a testimony of the fact that God is fulfilling his word and he is going to build and he is in the process of building his one house of living stones in Yerushalayim. And you know, many Christians, I, I, I have traveled to many countries in the world, and many times believers will come over to me after I've spoken, and they'll say to me, well, what about the temple? What about the temple up on the Temple Mount? What do you, what do you think about that? Well, I say, well, it most likely it's going to be built, but that is not the temple. That is really the deep, deep concern of God. The temple, the, the real temple, where, where the glory of God rests, is the temple, the one temple of God made of living stones, where Messiah will be enthroned in the spirit on the throne of David, where he will finally be king over us. We, we worship him as our king, but, but if he is our king, we have to be totally subject to our king. We have to do his will. We have to be obedient to him. We have to love him. We have to worship him. And, we, and, he, has to, and he needs to be at home. It has to do with, I spoke about this yesterday very briefly, it has to do with the great homecoming. Now we have, we're in the process of coming home. We've come home to the land of Israel. Some of us who are, are messianic believers, we've come home to the God of Israel. You are coming home to Zion. You are recognizing that Zion is your birthplace. And it's interesting, I've seen this many times with believers who, are come, who come to Israel for the first time, and they say, you know what? I feel like I'm coming home. I don't understand this. It's true, you are coming home. You are coming home. This is because this is the place where the Lord will, is, is resting. This is his resting place. What does it mean? that Zion is his resting place. It means just as it was in the beginning when he created the world and he rested because he saw it was very good, in the end he's going to see something that is very good. And just as he said about his son, his beloved son, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, he will now say this is the bride of my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God will reach his goal. For all of us who have been involved for many years, uh, it seems to us like it's mission impossible. It is mission impossible. It is. But it's not impossible for God. Shall anything be impossible for our God? He will reach his goal. We are in process, we're following him, we're on a pilgrimage, and it's important that we understand that this is the pilgrimage that we are on, to reach the goal, to build the house of God. And I want to just read some scriptures from Zechariah chapter six. This is Zechariah chapter 6, and I'll read from uh, verse 12. Now, Zechariah, we know, was, was a prophet who prophesied when the Israelites came back from Babylon, 
he, together with Haggai, with Haggai, they prophesied encouraging the people because the people were very discouraged. There were many enemies and they couldn't really uh, proceed with the building of the house of God. So he was a, a prophet for that time, but he also was a prophet for the end times. And very often in scripture, you will have prophecies that have a double meaning. They'll have a, a particular meaning and they'll have a prophetic meaning. So this he, here is, is, is definitely a, a, a prophecy. Behold the man whose name is the branch. From his place he shall branch out, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Yes, he shall build the temple of the Lord. He shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule on his throne. So he shall be a priest on his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. So what we see here is a, a picture, a prophetic picture of the temple of God being built in Jerusalem, but it's a different kind of a temple because we see that the one who is seated on the throne is both king and priest. So that means he is a priest after the order of Malkitzedek. So this is the spiritual house of God that is going to be built in Jerusalem where he will be seated on his throne. And the council of peace shall be between them both. Between them both, the, the council of peace will be between kingship and priesthood. The two come together in one, in Yeshua HaMashiach and in us, and in us. Now the elaborate crown shall be for a memorial in the temple of the Lord for Halem, Tobiah, Jediah, and Hen, the sons of Zephaniah. Even those who are far away, that's the nations, shall come and build the temple of the Lord. You shall come and build the temple of the Lord together with us. Then, and this is what God is saying to Israel through the prophet, then you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And this shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Then you shall know, Israel, you will know at that time that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you when this temple is built in which I will be enthroned. You will know I am the Messiah of Israel and of the nations. And they have come together and built this holy temple of God, this one temple of God built of living stones. That is the goal. That is the goal before the second coming of the Lord. There are many believers that say, well, uh, Jerusalem do does, doesn't have anything prophetic to say to us until after the Lord returns. Then there's a millennium and the kingship of the Lord. No, there is something that God wants to finish, the restoration of all things before the second coming of the Lord. He wants there to be a bride made ready, welcoming him when he comes from heaven. So there is something that we are called to fulfill in the purposes of God before the second coming. And then the Lord will come. And then the Lord will establish his messianic kingdom. And then the will, Lord will be seated on the throne of David and worshipped in Israel which, and in Jerusalem, which will be the world, it is already, but the world will recognize it. It will be the world capital and the blessing of God, the kingdom of God will spread and cover the entire earth. This is what, dear brothers and sisters, we are involved with. This is what we have been called to. And we need to let, we need to recognize this. We need to let it sit deeply in our hearts so that we can follow the Lord even in, in this great battle in, that we're, we're seeing here happening in Israel right now, we need to follow the Lord, trust the Lord. He will cover us. Some of us will be martyred, but he will cover us and he will protect us and we will reach the goal that he's prepared so that he receives the honor and he receives the glory. Hallelujah. <laughs>